Namaste. Namaste and everybody welcome who is watching now, who is to watch now, who will watch anytime. Uh, welcome to the art of the word that I am. We will dive deep like always. I'm telling you, um, yesterday it was summer here, not summer really, a few days ago it was summer, then it just collapsed into winter and now it's really cold so i love to make videos outside but when video is long and profound and outside is cold you will probably see me live now much more i usually go live at evening but i didn't have a topic now but maybe i just need more rest so like this Intense times, you know, I feel like surgery all around my brain. I wasn't sleeping really. Today I slept very nice, but feels like something very divine is going on. Uh, so I hope everybody is feeling the best as you can. And you are in love that you are. And... I will speak in this video, this video, not for anyone who gets angry when we speak about a religion. This is source truth. I'm, I'm, I'm to speak about source truth that masters actually brought and the religion that was created out of it. And I will also speak about my experience through religion, you know. My experience is very long and profound in religion, sects, gurus, because I experienced all these realities in my short life. Now I'm 37 years old and I experienced these realities in my short life very profoundly since birth, since young age, my, we were living under the Catholic Church. I was literally born in St. Thomas under the Catholic Church of St. Thomas. I was raised by a grandmother who was kind of fanatic, Christian fanatic. And I learned a lot about what is not God, what is not love, what is not Jesus through that time up to 18. When I was 18 years old, I left, I awakened, I started to diving deep and soon after I just left to India. And in India, the abuse went further. In India, especially first years of my awakening, I was enslaved by a sect, Hare Krishna International Society for Krishna Consciousness, which is the Hindu version of Christianity, you can say. And I've seen a lot of gurus and I've seen what they are doing. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, religion, religion is once again, every religion, like I was introduced in Christianity as a young boy, you are a sinner. You are not good. There is Lord Master above who will punish you with eternal hell if you will not obey. So the re religion is kind of... You are guilty of being born here because you have done something. This is such is in Christianity. You have... You have original sin and you are in this world. So the religion tells you that you are guilty and you should feel like you are a sinner. I know I was raised by under a Catholic church, literally under the Catholic church, the next neighbor house, you know. And there is a master, a Lord, who is always above you, and only he can save you. 
Nobody else can save you because you're a sinner, you're guilty, and you're a slave, and you're never equal. You are always separated, and only mercy is that that master saves you. This is my experience through childhood in Christian religion. In 18, I left Catholic Church when I was 18 years old. It was enough. But I will tell you something. I will tell you something. What a master would never do. Whether it was Master Jesus or it was Master Krishna or Master Buddha. Whoever. He will never want you to worship him. To make him God. To think that he can save you. Why? Why? Because this would deny your divinity. This will, divine, this will deny the magnificence of your divine existence, which is we all are source. You are source. I am source. We all are manifestations of the source. And to have a Lord who is above you, a personification, and you are never equal to him, and he can save you, this means that you are not divine, you can never rise to his level, and actually, it just keeps you in the matrix, because you keep yourself in separation from the source that you actually are. Just listen to this. You keep yourself away from the source, from who you really are, by accepting that there is somebody, a person, who is God, and he will save you. And in this way, you declare, I'm not equal, I'm not divine, and you never ascend to his level. But just look what the divine qualities of God are, like in Jesus, all good, all wise, divine judgment, discernment, blessings, everybody, truth, love, compassion. So what we are actually dealing with here, in religion is inverted matrix. They actually make you afraid of somebody who has the best qualities which are in you. And what the master, like Master Jesus, when he came to earth, he wanted to show you the divine qualities which are yours. Compassion, wisdom, unshaken truth, power, love, blessings everybody healing everything what is within you so the true intention of master it, either it was krishna or it was jesus was that you work on yourself and you embody and you become as jesus christ said greater than i am you do greater things and the last thing that a master, any enlightened being would want in this world for you to fucking worship him and make him Lord, Savior, because this would deny you and rob you of your own divine magnificence that you are, that actually every master comes only to manifest you through his power, through his roar, through his truth, through his light, through miracles, through whatever he's doing. Never want you to. And then, he's a Lord, he's a Savior. I'm a sinner, now you're guilty. Now you're bad, and you can never rise to his level. And if such divine beings exist, and yes, they do, on higher level where there's only equality and no authorities and that kind of shit like in this world, if they could cry like we on earth, can they would cry for you because it is the opposite to what the master wanted to give you master wanted to give you the process follow this becomes greater than i am you will do greater things and that's why i left christianity at 18. i was raised under i was born under the church actually underneath the church of saint thomas here <laughs> 
And at 18, I left. But I never left that what Jesus represented. And I never left now, and I never will, because the same thing as Krishna represents in Buddha. And never what the religions represent. Religion is inverted, inverted matrix. It makes you worship the best qualities in you, that are in you, that Master had show you in his example. It makes you worship your own best qualities. Separate your divine self from you and then worship and enslave yourself by that illusion. You never become, like, I'm a sinner, I'm guilty. I never be. Inverted matrix. That's how they work. They don't like what masters come to do here, to teach people how to become gods again. And then they create the religion in their name to enslave people in their name. And whoever is blaming Jesus or Krishna, he's also an idiot. Because, like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, do know that always I have to come. Always I'm coming like the waves of the ocean because wickedness and wickedness in man and time always inverts my truth, which is that we all are one, we all are love, we all are same. There's nothing but, like in Bhagavad Gita, there is only I am, there's nothing but I am. I am everywhere, I am everything. I'm the best in you, I'm the best in demon, like this Krishna describing. The I am, not himself, like religion, now he's describing himself. No, he's describing the I am presence, who we all are, the source, manifestation of the source, that we all can embody. And now let me go back, because now I'm at my early stage, when I was in Christianity. And there you actually have to, have to fear God. You are a sinner. You are guilty. So anyway, they separate you and make some Lord out of the master who wants to teach you about love that you are. And, they sep and so it has to be separation because guilt, fear, I'm not good enough, I'm a sinner, are the States of beings that just show you that you are out of alignment with the source. And religion tells you, you are a sinner, kneel. Like one boy one year ago wrote me, my uncle told me I have to kneel on the ground and tell I'm a sinner because he saw what I'm doing, this ascension and like this. Fuck your uncle. There's no sinner, but your uncle, you should stay away from him. There's no sin, even your uncle is not sinning. Everything is just choice and insanity in the matrix. Free will, from the source perspective, there's no sinner, even uncle who told you such thing that traumatized the little boy like this, he's not a sinner, but remove that uncle away from that boy, please. In this way, religion teaching you, Christ now I'm at Christianity because I will go through Christianity, through Hinduism, through Gurus, where I was, where, where I met, where I was learning about what is not God, what is not love. And then I will go where I was learning what is love, what is God, which was which actually only with Sufis and Baals, Fakirs, which are actually free souls, the rainbows of all the religion. And they dance and enjoy. There I found my truth. But everywhere else, with gurus, with sects, with all these famous gurus and everything, if you go to that temple, you will see something you don't want to see. Enslavement of souls for salvation. And they have videos like they teach it. Speaking same shit like I speak, but why are you keeping slaves in your temple? I'm a human being who is enlightened and God knows, but I'm just as simple human beings as we all are, and there's always just bullshit, everything. False ascension matrix everywhere. Telling you, give me your power away. Separate yourself from yourself. Believe in me. Trust in me. You will get salvation through me. And religion, Christianity, or International Society for Krishna Consciousness and Gaudiya Math, when I was part, which is actually same as Christianity, just the spiritual and through meditation, and they actually give you some taste so that you get hooked that you cannot leave. False ascension matrices. So, okay, we are at Christianity, where I left at 18 years ago. 
when I was 18 years old, I left it. Actually, worshipping your best divine quality, separating your best divine quality for yourself, then being afraid of that, thinking that your best qualities outside of you can save you, and you have to believe in that. Now you have to be guilty, you're a sinner, you're never good enough. So what is this? This is such false essential matrix. You know what they're doing. You know what they're doing. They're actually denying you of ever, 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 ever ascending to your divine magnificence. Look, I start to cry. Denying you from your divine magnificence. That's, and they have free will. Like Krishna said, there's no cheaters. There's no cheaters. It's just cheaters, yes. Everybody cheating in this world and those who want to be cheated. So it's okay. These religions are here. I try to explain this to my brother John. For people want this. People want to be cheated. People want that. And they don't want to work on themselves. They don't want to do that what Jesus wants them to do. So let them have a religion, but you don't have to have it. You can have the real thing which actually the same thing that Buddha and Krishna and Jesus and everybody brought, which is work on yourself. Get rid of your false self. Kingdom is within. Find your home. Make your heart home. Get enlightened. Work on yourself until you do. Then you become greater. So, guilt is original sin. To think you're a sinner, you're separating yourself out of alignment with the source, means you are going to your own hell that you are creating. And they tell you you have to be guilty, otherwise you go to hell. Hey, baby, listen. False ascension matrix, everything inverted. Truth is, love yourself if you want to be in alignment with source. Know that you are the manifestation of the source that we are. But they tell you, be guilty, be sinner. You're a sinner. You're never good enough. Yes, yes. The function of those who created the inverted matrix and such religions as Christianity was to undermine the project of Jesus Christ because he wanted to give to people to become greater than him, to embody that. And now they will tell you everything what he didn't want you to do. They will tell you, you must do, you go to hell. You should not love yourself. You must be guilty. You're a sinner. And why I'm speaking this? And then I will go to also to, because what I'm dealing through my work is with people who have Christianity within themselves and those who have Krishna consciousness within himself, which are same things. Krishna Christ both, both presented as saviors and one and only gods. Actually, it was same being in different incarnations. And why I'm telling this? Because as long, like you cannot serve two masters. You cannot be against yourself and for yourself. You cannot say, yes, I'm ascending and working on myself, but I believe there's a Lord, Master, Savior, and I'm a sinner. And if I only can ascend through, but then you don't love yourself. You think you're guilty. You actually declaring that you are not there's no divinity and magnificence in when you that you could rise to the level of a master Jesus in lifetimes. I don't say that you have to in this, but you declare, no, I'm not. I am my false self. And only Jesus can save me. And on the other hand, you sit in on, on another chair where you try to embody the source energy, I'm God. And this is Everything is multidimensional, yes, but some dimensions just don't go together. And you have to decide, you go to church or you meditate. Because if you will nurture both, you'll go insane. I've seen this in Hare Krishna so many times. You cannot be slave and you want to become ascended master. And you go insane, it's not just... <laughs> Not all energies fit together, not all, especially the completely, the conception which are against your soul, 
to take away your divinity like religion and then conceptions which are for you to the embody the master that you are just doesn't go together because it's like you want to make war and peace to, together what will you have you want to make war and peace together what will you have and i was so lucky at 18 because i'm connected i'm connected with divine beings with angels i'm blessed and like this i just knew from age of eight this something is not this is something is here something not okay <laughs> actually when i was a doctor at seven years old i was just doctor asked me if i'm allergic to something and i just shoot out i don't know it was not me it was my highest self it was so Yes, to religions and to all kinds of authorities and Dr. White people. <laughs> and I was wondering what is it, but I soon I realized what is this about. <laughs> so I left. I never left the love of Jesus. I never left that truth. But what is that truth? That truth is. That Krishna was a human being and Jesus was a human being, but just completed the realized human being who made out of himself, revealed, remembered, embodied who we all are, and just shown us, hey, this is who you are, this is your divine magnificence. You can do all these great things. You can you can be so wise, you can be unshaken truth, you can roar, you can have so much love, compassion, you can stand in your power. You can be healthy, you can heal, you can do all these great, greater things. Just turn water into grape juice because wine will fuck you up. <laughs> like this. And, and religion is actually against everything that masters that. And that's why it's insanity. Those who don't like religion, then they hate Jesus. That's insanity. The dude was crucified because Jews didn't like how he looked. Jews wanted him to be Jew. Like the Christians want us to be Christian now. Now is Christ consciousness. There are many Jesuses all around the world. And Jesus seen us. <laughs> but it's same shit. Because he didn't represent their law and their truth. Now kill him. Now also they, they would not accept if they would, but never one man will come who's a savior this time. But if he would come now and speak what I'm speaking and what uh, Jim Carrey is speaking and what Eckhart Tolle is speaking and what uh, Krishnamurti spoke, he's like, you're not Jesus, kill him, put him in prison. He's blaspheming the world greatest uh, re religion. They would kill him. Same as Jews, for sure. If they could, so they cannot do these things anymore to us. We are Christ consciousness. Same story. He came with a new law. We always come when the source energy, when the wave comes, like now is really great wave, and now we are many here. Some we realize much, some are following, some are even above us. And nobody is above, but just in vibration. Now well, they cannot do anything. But always we came with new law. Like there was this Jewish law that time introducing just God as justice because nobody consciousness was such that they just could not conceive anything else but be afraid of like this. And then the new new era came. New age came. Age of Pisces. And then he came to present no God is love. No God is law and justice kill him. Now age of Aquarius. Now we represent source truth. We all are that. And actually, Jesus Christ represented in the Gospel of Thomas, you can read, as actually, that's why the church doesn't like that book, because he's telling you how to become God. Actually, but he didn't speak this, that time he spoke this to few people, to few disciples. The world was not ready. Now, everywhere on YouTube, even on television, you can see here spirituality the highest spirituality why because we are ready second coming is I mean, they also hindus also waiting for kalki on a horse but it's all about you just listen to that jesus spoke the highest knowledge that time to thomas and to few 
But now, everywhere on YouTube, everywhere, everybody who is in truth is speaking the source truth that we all are source energy and we can embody our highest, higher self, highest self, whatever you call, we can become again God. That what was before spoken, just a few, because people that time could only understand, hey, hey, we are brothers and sisters, come on. Love yourself and love others. Don't harm each other. We all are children of same God. This they could understand, nothing else he could speak. He could tell them, be good, so good will come. And now we are at it for embody just that. Right? That's why in the past, always one, two, three came like this to just show to people. But now we are everywhere. <laughs> That's why beware, because masters is everywhere. This is different time. In the past, people expected everybody is regular human who is in their mind, in karma, who you, you can trick, who doesn't read your mind. That time is different. There are masters here. Oh, don't act like this. So, okay. I went quite deep, so I will just speak now about my further experience in Hinduism. Oof. Oh, this was the worst. I'm sorry. I just had to block a brother because I couldn't help him with his wound, which was actually caused by that. I actually don't want to help him. I want to help him if he won't help, but I don't want him defending his mind and this all. And I just, I deal with no resistance. And if I can help, I can help, but if somebody's projecting something for too long and I see that there's... But I know I will tell you from where this wound comes. Now, this video is very important because the sect that I experienced, which was... I, give, I will give name because it's institution. I will not give name, no guru, only those gurus who really blessed me and given me something great. Right? was Gaudiya Math Institution, which is actually the source institution that for, from International Krishna Society of Consciousness, which is here on the West, but they don't like each other, Gaudiya Math. And it's actually the same philosophy, but they don't like each other. Like this, uh, all, all religions, all sects. There I was three years. And I am so happy and lucky. I was traumatized with fanatical Christianism by my grandmother who was fanatic. I was living underneath the Catholic Church of St. Thomas, born there. I got free at 18 and then immediately I got awakened, I got awakened, I got awakened, then I got enslaved again. <laughs> Because I was so in ecstasy and the mantra worked. And because I was all my life suffered with drugs, with abuse, sexual abuse in childhood, parents left me, fanatical grandmother, religion and everything. Hey, I needed drugs to feel good. But then I got awakened through the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which actually I don't chant anymore. I don't chant mantras because love just flows. But if I hear it in meditation, in I sing it like this. It is, it's really... But beware of this mantra. It's the most powerful for purification. It just start purging out everything what it is when you start chanting it. And it can give you really the most profound love. If they would present it correctly. But I was smart. I kept the mantra. I left them. But I went through these three years through such... I'm so sensitive and this was really emotional and spiritual abuse and, and enslavement, which actually like my brother and so many does, don't get free. I got free so fast that nobody does. And I see people who are dealing with ascension now and everything, 20 years still, and they are still hooked in that. And I will tell you what is about. What is about. They actually give you a very powerful plus process, which is in Vedas is written, this is the mantra of all mantras. All mantras are contained in this mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramu, Hare Ramu, Ramu Ramu, Hare Hare. Oh, my heart sings with joy because I know what it means. Radha Rani and Krishna dancing and making love and gopis and Krishna making love. 
Hare is the energy that Devi, Krishna is the man making love a hundred times. And it's divine love, divine rasa. And they actually tell you to be afraid of these conceptions. These conceptions are not for you. You are not ready. Don't read these books. Don't go there. I was reading this book just because they told me not to read it. <laughs> and I don't read books. But I read that book. Really took me long because I could read one page or two before I go crazy. I'm not made for reading. I'm made for article. One article, okay, if it's short. I'm made for writing. And this was such nectar. Thank you that you told me not to read that. <laughs> I don't read books, but I read this because it was divine sexuality and most divine spirituality. How life should be. Love. But what they do, what they do, everything what Krishna told them not to do. I will dive deep because this is much, in, in Christianity, not so much spiritual. You can get free very easily if you are smart because there's no powerful spiritual process. Nobody is controlling you. Nobody tells you you have to follow. Blah, blah, blah. But here you have literally a guru. And literally as the young boys awake, through such powerful process, and they usually here in the West come from suffering, from suffering and many Christian background. And then they, their heart chakra awakens and divine heart, divine love flows. And yes, like I, I didn't need drugs because mantra was so beautiful. But then I met those sects, this sect. And actually they make you believe that you get this from the guru that he's uh, like Jesus Christ, say. And Hinduism, 80% is about that. Guru is a savior like Jesus Christ. Guru is a representation of God, and you can only go through Guru. He's your savior. And they even go so far in that sect. They brainwash you, the traumatized boys who just felt some love for the first time <laughs> in life. Western traumatized boys, they tell them, if you leave the guru, if you speak against the guru, if you leave the institution, you make a most terrible offense, you will go to Patalaloka, which is hellish realms. But because the process is so powerful, it gives you such divine ecstasy, and young boys are coming, it hooks you for life. Because you actually believe, because you actually get something, they give you a powerful process. But, they, but then they false ascension matrix kicks in and they tell you then what they tell you, that you get it from guru. And if you leave the guru, you leave your soul and you go to the lowest consciousness that is possible. They actually told me when I left after three years, you see you live like a pig, you will be like a pig. I am an enlightened pig. And these people are still, even these gurus are still there, there where they are in false ascension matrix. Because if you imprison somebody in false ascension matrix, you are dead also. You cannot go out. This is the reality of all the enslavement. The one who imprisons you, he imprisons himself. And that's why they are not rising. And like they promised me, I am a pig, okay. Well, I don't know if source knows if I'm a pig. I don't know. Doesn't agree. I should not speak like this about myself. <laughs> and about them also not. I pray for them. May you rise also out of this pig house. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. That's guru business. That's why I don't search for gurus. That's why I don't want to be a guru. I'm not a guru. I freed myself. I don't want karma from any disciple. I want to teach those who want to learn how to reach enlightenment, help them, give them value through videos and videos like this and writings 
And then I do my best. I know what gurus are. Guru takes your soul. Promises you salvation that you never get. Same like Jesus Christ. And like Hinduism, you see, especially like I was in a Krishna society sect. Krishna was loving divine feminine goddess. He actually didn't like men. He spoke to three men and he gave them basic knowledge, Bhagavad Gita. But to women, to 108 gopis and more in a night, he presented most divine spiritual truths such that man could never comprehend. And now man created religion out of him, made him a savior, a lord, and actually Bhagavan Krishna means sweetness, love, compassion. No Lord, no Master. Krishna was actually, when he was in this world, everybody just loved him. He didn't want nobody to think he's that he's actually nobody. The conception of God and everything in Vrindavan was gone. He was not like Jesus or nothing like this. Everybody just loved that boy from childhood and always. And that was the sweetness of Vrindavan because there was no God that was just love. And that's why, why what, what they made out of him, it's insanity. He actually, if you read a story about Krishna, nobody knows. Because there's no God, we all are God. And he came like this. And he was actually glorifying divine feminine. He was actually re revealing to goddesses most deep wisdom. And all these stories are with goddesses. You won't see men in most sweetest stories in greatest rasa, in greatest honey that is presented and only Krishna and Gopis. And now men created the re religion out of him and they made women inferior. They actually teach this man in Hare Krishna that woman is dirty and when she has a menstrual period you should not touch her and then if you're touching your praying beads you made an offense. What the fuck? Women must be in the backside of the temple. And I'm not speaking only about Krishna society. This is how Hinduism is, I'm sorry. And the Vedic society was all about divine feminine like Krishna represented. He's only speaking, she's everything that I'm nothing without. I only exist for her. Her light is everything I want to see. I cannot see myself without her light. She's my only pleasure. Only divine feminine, divine feminine. But what they did in Hinduism is acha. Insanity. Insanity. And I have first hand experience. Also with other gurus, not only here. And you have to follow everything what they say. They completely control your life. They tell you everything outside of their institution is hell. And if you are dealing with people outside, you are getting their energy, you're getting their karma, you should isolate yourself, separate you completely. And make you hate divine feminine. And they tell you this world, there's nothing beautiful in this world. Actually, your ground chakra is completely destroyed. You find no joy anymore in this world. It's insane. That's why you see all these who are insects are so hooked to the gurus. Because they destroy and really that separation between women and men and it goes on sexual chakra much. Guilt, same as in Christianity, you're guilty of something because you're human. And fear if you will offend guru, if you will leave guru, you will go to hell and this destroys your sexual chakra. And now they got you. And now they're only, that's why you see all these people in all the sects. And you can see Sai Baba sect, whatever sect. I'm sorry, I'll tell you this. I'm not. That's Kalki speak now. That's Kalki talk. Cut the bullshit to pieces. Gurus, these gurus are actually 
consuming sexual energy from all the disciples and that's why they're so hooked and in ecstasy when he comes. Yeah. That's why they cannot go away and they all have problems with sexual chakra also I had, which I healed. I had such prostate problems. I was sexually abused in childhood. Then I was abused by them. Then my prostate became swallowing like that I was in hospital many times. Tell you, it's, if you ejaculate, you're a sinner, you're the worst. If you have sex, you're worst. Sex is only for reprocreation, there's no love. It's insanity. And these are 80% of the sects of Hinduism like this. And the same like in Christianity. You are, but on the more intense level, because they actually give you the process, the meditation, that you get connected. But why is it false ascension matrix? Why? Because your consciousness rises, but now they control you with fear, with guilt, with threats. Same as in Christianity, if you leave Jesus, you go to hell. In Hinduism, means if you leave Guru, you leave your highest good, you will not get enlightened, you will go down. Fear, and you are guilty of something always. Guilty of being in this world. And Inverted philosophy destroys your sexual chakra, destroys your ground chakra. And now, it's like a dead end. The consciousness gets risen, risen, but only in freedom, in love, in expansion, in harmony, you can rise further. And now they are locked there, self. And you can see this in Christianity, who are dealing with so much. Not dealing with so much. I love Jesus. I love Krishna. I actually sometimes forget and I uh, act like Krishna and like Jesus. No problem. That's no problem. Your divine self, they were masters. We all are divine masters here. But they get stuck. If you have beliefs in that separation, there's Lord Krishna, Lord Jesus that will save me, that I'm never equal to as the master of all, and I have some guilt, I'm guilty of being in this world, and like this. You never rise. You never rise. Above that. You're always stuck. And that's why, this is very, very, this is advanced matrix of enslavement, because they actually give you spiritual process, but then they lock you up on the next level. And you cannot go further. If you go further, you leave Guru, you leave the Savior, it's same Christianity or... But Hinduism is more intense because it's personal relation with Guru and with other disciple, and it's a discipline and it's really like controlled and like this. If you go to any Hindu temple, if you go to Sadhguru temple, you will see these people who are there have... I didn't want to mention no name. Okay, Sadhguru temple, it's institution. I was there, I saw it, same. They have to eat, first serve everybody, then eat, they have to cook, they have to do tap, 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 tap. It's monastery. And they are there, and they actually also, if they follow, and like this, they will reach, but they listen to better wisdom. But actually, when you see this in such temple, then you're like, what the fuck? They are really like, I don't want to use this word. Because I love the guy. I just don't like that shit in Hinduism. And they have to go. And like we who are born, who are here, here in the West and bows in India, and like this, we speak the truth. We all are equal. Men and women are equal. Freedom and like this. I'm so lucky. I was so much in India, but I'm a human being. I'm a Westerner. Enlightened Westerner. And they cannot let go of this, of some beliefs. Also, these gurus, you can see, these temple systems they have to keep and how they treat people and everything. Ta -ta 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 you have literally everything on time. Here you wake up. Here you go for morning practice. Here you have this. Here you have breakfast. Here you work. Here you have rest. Here you have evening. Ta -da 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 -da. It's like ta -da -da every day. Ta -da -da -da. Ta -da -da. And everything completely controlled. And that separation between women and men, because it's Indian 
tradition. So also if you go there, you will go in the temple of gurus you like and you will, what is happening here? It's like in church. And I see even, I will speak with no judgment, just discernment and what I see. Even gurus, they get stuck there as they cannot let go of this beliefs and separation. And I see on Facebook and like this, you see when somebody tells you chant Hare Krishna and be happy and like this, these phrases. I know what this phrase means. This phrase was what they brainwash you all the time with. And you just, I see and I feel, oh, this person cannot let go. And I see so many of my brothers. I have completely emptied my cup. When I was 18, 19, I emptied my cup of Christianity. When I left Hare Krishna, I healed the wounds and everything. I emptied my cup. I love Krishna. I love the stories of Krishna. I love the stories of Krishna and Radharani and the love that he represented. But these people, they confuse me because they cannot let go. They still have within themselves that belief that this is the truth, what this religion teaches. And same like those who always tell you about Jesus' name. Same. It's okay, thank you for blessing me and everything. But I did what I'm doing and I did what Jesus told us to do and what Krishna told us to do, to be greater than them and embody that love. I'm sorry, I don't need that. Religion is a horse. You go to swim in the ocean of love and you have clothes on, which are religious clothes. Now if you want to swim in the ocean, you have to get off the damn horse, you have to undress yourself naked. If you remain on the horse that's in the religion, you will never swim in the ocean of love, you will never dive deep because the horse will not go there, you have to go down. But if you will keep the clothes of religion on, you will drown because you didn't unplug yourself. And that is sitting on two chairs. I never left love of Krishna, actually. I embody everything what I wanted and realized what I have read in my youth that masters realized about Krishna and the state of consciousness it is. I did what he wanted me to do. And I am the, the man that Jesus wanted us to be and I just started, I do greater things. I just have consciousness now and that truth, that divine connection and enlightenment unshaken. That's why I don't need these things. I don't like to hear these things because it's okay if you hear from somebody, but if you're a teacher like me, I see what is happening. This person is hooked in Hare Krishna still, sitting on two chairs, and that's why all the wounds coming and feeling guilty. And I see, and then I see the only thing that can save you, you let go of this. Because you're trying to sit on two chairs and one chair is going up. The one is remaining here in third dimension, which is a religion. How can you sit on two chairs? You tear yourself apart. That's why many go insane. And they try to follow a religion and ascension at the same time. And that I mean the real religion. Believing in the Savior, Lord, outside of you. And that's the only way. And then trying to do ascension also which are two different. You are embodying God here, but here you are worshipping God. And you ne here you never can be equal. You never, but here you actually say what is here offense. Here you say in ascension, you say I'm God. And if Jesus told you, you all are God. And if you read the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus told to everybody. how to become gods again. But the Bible is only comprised with the parts that didn't harm their plans to invert, to invert the teachings and to enslave the humanity under the church. They kept very little portion of the heritage of Jesus Christ because everything else he spoke would free people, would make people gods. But this I was speaking on the beginning part, very profoundly, so you can go back.
I'll not repeat now. The truth is, the real, the true truth is, that there's only love. There's no religion. I will tell you. I'm sorry, I'm like Thor. I'm very strong. I just look skinny. Ah. Well, it's the bottle that I have, what to do. <laughs> it's here by hand. I'm thirsty. I don't want to go back. But the truth is, the truth is, there's no religion. There's only love. And Buddha is that same love. Jesus Christ is that same love. Krishna is that same love. And you, you are that same love. You are that same love too. But difference that Krishna, Jesus, Buddha, they showed to those who don't know that what they are, what we are. That's the only truth. We all are source energy. We all are source energy. There's no separation. There are differences in religions because Krishna came in different time. He presented much more because the consciousness was higher. Then when Buddha and Jesus came, they came literally in savage. Buddha came when they completely misunderstood religion and Jesus came where they were killing the name of religion. They came into savages. They had to teach them like actually Buddha and Jesus were... They came same time and message was very similar. What you do to another, it will come to you. It was message of karma. Be good, so good will come to you. Because the world needed that. And when Krishna came, was connected to Vedic tradition. When Buddha came, was also connected to Vedic tradition because... They literally abused the religion and were killing in name of religion, animals and people and everything. So he came and told, there's no religion, there's no God, there's only karma. If you do good, good will come back. If you do bad, bad will come back. There's only love, he actually wanted to tell them. But he never used this word because they didn't understand anymore. So they both came to just teach, hey, be good, so good will come back. And like... They came according to the level of consciousness and tradition, culture of the people, what they could understand. So naturally Jesus was relating to Father and the Jewish. So the Jews could comprehend, hey, Father is maybe really love. It's not that what we think. And we all are children of this. Like this, they always come according to tradition, according to the state of consciousness, according to what people need. So they can present the message in the way that they can understand. And that's why Buddha presented through Hinduism. He completely debunked Hinduism. He had to because they didn't understand anymore. And he said, there's no God. But actually, in a mysterious way, when he said there's no God, he actually brought them closer to God. Because they were killing and hating and sacrificing animals and even humans in the name of God because they completely changed all the laws and misunderstood everything. Their consciousness was so low. So in this way, when he said, there's no God, just if you will do bad to others, it come back to you. In, in this way, he brought them closer to God. Because in the name of God, they were going to hell, their own hell. He said, there's no God. There's only karma. There's nothing. I'm nothing. You are nothing. He didn't even use word love because there was no conception. They, India was lost completely. According to tradition, according to level consciousness. Yes. It is that same love, just presenting the message the way that people can comprehend. And some people still live 2,000 years ago. 
and do not understand that we are bringing the new love, the new law now, and love is the law. And we all are that love. And we all can do greater things. We all can embody the source that we all are if we do the work on ourselves. And we can please Jesus, please Krishna, because with this bullshit, you're not pleasing the master that you worship, because he don't want you to worship him, he wants you to be greater than him, to actually follow and be that, what he's shown. Because otherwise, why would he come? To show us what is to be human being. But like I said on the beginning, in a religion, we separate the best qualities out of ourselves. We are sinner, and now we worship that best qualities as Lord Savior outside of ourselves. No, it's about these best qualities, compassion, love, understanding, wisdom, power, truth, integrity, is what we have to embody. Roar. <laughs> That's how it is. That's how it should be. As above, so below. You are your higher self. As it was in the beginning, so now in the end, in love now, we are that love now. You are that love now. You are source energy. I am that source energy. We are the source energy. I'm doing the best that I can to embody the best that I can embody every moment now. And you, please, also, you're doing the best always that you can. But don't do less. You cannot. You're always doing the best that you can. But the new law is that what Jesus brought, what Krishna was, what Buddha was, we all can be and we are just simple human beings. All these religions were just love presented in the way that people in that tradition, on that level of consciousness, in that country could understand and perceive, so they could relate to. And it's just the same love teaching us of who we are. And that's why religions are so different because the state of consciousness, the culture, the conception and everything perception of the people where masters descended was different. And if we understand this, we can keep our love to Christianity, our love to Hinduism. We can keep Krishna. I keep Krishna. I am Krishna. What the fuck? I keep Jesus. I'm Jesus. I keep Buddha. I keep Buddha. I keep Radharani. I'm sexy as her. I keep Mary Magdalene. I'm more sexy. Okay. I'm divine feminine, so I say I'm more sexy. Then. Like, I keep everybody. It's who you are. You don't have to leave anybody. I never left. I left only their bullshit. I'm like a swan. I was dunked into all these religions just to take the nectar out, just to teach this now. There's only one law. And in all religions, the master always came. What he came? To show you that you are that. That you can do greater things. You could be so compassionate, so full of truth, so wise. You can heal yourself and others. You can do greater things. The kingdom is within you and you are the king and queen. The second coming is about you rising out of the kingdom. Let that kingdom come. I don't know why speaking this word always. I never read the Bible. What is this coming always? Three years now. <laughs> but yes, people say this sounds like a Bible. It sounds like a Bible, but it's not a Bible because it's the truth what Bible people don't want you to hear. <laughs> the truth, the truth, the truth. There's no separation. Krishna is source energy, Buddha is source energy, Jesus is source energy, and they were all teaching you that you are that source energy to do greater things. About second coming, you ride on the horse like Kalki and Jesus from, you come for the second time from the heart. It's about you. It's about consciousness. Crystalline. Christ. Christus. You. Ringing. <laughs> I don't like this. I never use this word. I'm a teacher like Buddha. I teach simple source, love like this. But now in this video, I just, because it's about uh, re religion, I'm telling you, Christ consciousness, to embody the consciousness that Christ wanted to show, not to worship Christ. You're worshiping the best qualities of yourself separating. 
everything that is good within you and creating an idol that now is your God. And the Master Jesus is crying because now you think you're guilty and you're a sinner and you've separated everything that is good in you to be in him. But he just wanted to for you to reveal and be that source energy and embody that source energy and do greater things. And what I really found in India, and this is my mood, and what I found is mood in many in ascensions who are not in India. I found bowels and fakirs. First Sufis, Sufis, Sufis and Tantrics, yes. There I started diving deep and with yogis. Respect. Respect. Sadhus on the street. No institutional gurus and nothing. They spoke the source truth. They told me that. But then I met Baal's fakirs. Woo! Now what they believe, they believe in a rainbow. You will see Baal's in Bengal, Bangladesh are fakirs. And because in India and Bangladesh, Hindus and Muslim are in that some kind of war always, you know. But they go and they sing Hindu songs, Muslim songs, and the Muslim and Hindu gather, and they actually speak, there's one love, we all are human, and Muhammad is that one love, your Krishna is that love, Kali is that love, don't fight, but let us unite. And they actually sing the Hindu song in this way that they unite people, that they, people understand there's one love behind it. And they present really beautiful songs that actually sound Islamic and with Islamic words in it. And it's like Muslim, but actually they present the truth of one love that we all are. And that's so beautiful. And I, I met these great gurus. I could become one. Many are. Sad that I left. I'm a simple man. And then I found masters who had few followers, beautiful human beings. They were little dirty, little bad manners, like didn't have many followers. Because, and people were free, Muslims were there, Hindus were there, Christians were there, hippies were there. Everything, it was like a love parade. What is this? <laughs> You could get high there completely if you want to, like this, because many hippies are there. But if you find the masters, and I found really because I was going through all the traditions and religions and spirituality, and this I found on the end, I found myself. Love that we all are, just human beings. They all speak, Allah is human, Krishna is human. You embody Krishna, embody Radharani. They love everyone. All religions are welcome if you respect each other. We can dance together, we can sing. And they all organize events and Muslims come and Hindus come and some hippies and Westerners and like this. And they are just in love, in one love, in the rainbow. And this is what is about all. And they really present them through the message of their Muhammad, through the message of their Krishna, they present them we all are love. We all are that source energy. We can be one. Embody that greatness that Krishna is, that Allah is. And let us be one. We can, and they actually wear colors. Many they have dresses like rainbow dress. Actually, we can be rainbow. We don't have to fight. You can keep your Muslim tradition. We can, you can keep Hindu. But let us dance together. Let us... It's just one love presenting in different ways. That's how Sain present himself. It's that beautiful Lalon song. In this form, how you can call the water in the on the street dirty, where you call the same Ganga water holy and divine, and you take bath. And it's like this. Saint comes through different forms because it's the beauty of the rainbow is in many colors. So why would there be only tradition of Abraham? Why would there only be tradition? I will not use a religion because traditions will remain, but they will become unified in parts of the rainbow. Why there will be only tradition Buddhist? Why there will be only one sort of spirituality where we are so unique and different 
and all these traditions and everything is here so every bird can find a seat so every bird can find a seat let us no more fight let everybody find the seat and let there be no religion you find the seat so you embody that greatness that's how the same in mysterious way like in this Lalon song is manifesting himself through different forms because the beauty of the rainbow are different colors and when we understand that Jesus presented same love as Krishna presented to different cultures of people on different level of consciousness with different purpose with the same purpose to rise love but it's just same colors of the rainbow and the message is don't worship but become the rainbow like if you are connected to your higher self and like this with abrahamic tradition it's okay christ energy is krishna energy if you're connected with hindu okay if you're connected with buddha okay but just understand be a polar i'm connected with everything like you see i can sound like jesus i can sound like krishna i can go in tantra i can speak like buddha and that's a beauty that I feel, and I just feel like a rainbow, and I just feel all these masters are one, but the colors are different, and tastes are different, and I choose myself to embody all. <laughs> but if you have preferences, and what are your preferences, what you don't resonate, you don't, what you take, accept, nurture, but understand that you are that source energy. The master just told you, shown you who you are, and understand that just others other spiritual traditions are just colors of the rainbow different colors of same love we respect them and love them and let us be the rainbow but you nurture your love it is that love through jesus if it's love through krishna but understand that jesus and krishna they both only wanted to show you who you are you know hmm. and there's only rainbow there's no separation, there's no right way. Let me tell you just this. When Krishna is saying, I am the water, I am the light, I am, the, I am you, you pick up the stone, there I am, you go there, I am. He's speaking about I am. We all are that. I am, you. He's speaking about our true highest self, which is who we are, when we embody the source. And when, when Jesus was saying, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the word, only through me, I don't know. We have to understand this poem. Ah, he was not speaking about himself, but about I am. That I am that you are, is you are the way. I am the light. You have to be that I am the light. I am the truth. There's no other way, but to you be that truth, that I am, that everyone is. I am everywhere like to moses god said i am that i am who are you who am i i am who are you i am and that's that i am the light i am the only way the only way is for you to be that i am embody that i am conscious that you save yourself that you become your higher self in this world you come for the second time And the both in Hindu tradition, like in not in all Hindu tradition, like in Advaita and like this, many Hinduism is very beautiful. Also, but Guru sight is not so. But it's about you or that source. But because Hinduism is thousands of religion. But in the 80, 70, like 60 percent, it's they understand the Krishna saying, I am the separated from you, I'm God. I'm supreme. I am the light. I am the truth. Who not? And same Christianity people understand. I am the way. I am the light. The only way. So that's why. But you are not. That's the message. And then they go attack everybody who doesn't accept Jesus. But the understanding is that I am the truth in everyone to become that truth that's the way out and there's no other way but do you embody yourself from the other side and this night (laughs) 
So that's it for today. Religion is inverted. Matrix. False matrix. Which actually makes you separate your own best divine qualities which are due within you underneath your false self from yourself and then worship it as an idol, savior, master, guru, whatever. Same shit. Guru is same like Jesus in Christianity. You're one and only savior in Hinduism. Wait, let me... No, I'll finish this. My fire is getting down. So, but then you deny yourself from the magnificence of your divinity, of your divine self, of your divine magnificence, because you have made a man. You are now never equal to that being that you worship, and you actually worship your own divine qualities within you that you think you can never achieve. And now you're a sinner, and now you're guilty. And you can never ascend. And actually, what Master Jesus and Master Krishna, they both wanted to give you, is to embody that divine qualities that they manifested for you to, to see that truth, that love, that compassion, that power, that healing power. And religion is inverted, false matrix. It made humanity, and enslaved humanity, and told them to do exactly what Master never wanted. Worship him as a savior, and think of themselves as a sinners, but they can never reach and become. And actually, it's sin in those sects in Hinduism and in Christianity to think that you are equal to Jesus or to Krishna. You can never be, they tell you. You can never be, and it's an original sin if you think like this. And it ensures you that you never receive what Master wants to give you. I never left Krishna. I never left Jesus. I left all these sects and all these religions. I'm washed. I got naked long ago, so I could dive deep in the ocean of my heart. I'm naked of all religion. Your love made me undress myself completely. I may wear this. I don't wear it always. It's Krishna Tulasi. It's one of the most healthiest and most high vibrational plants on the earth. That is also most divine with Krishna love to us, it's manifestation of one of the goddesses. And I have her because she feels so lovely and so nice and I love her like Christmas. That's the only reason. <laughs> I kept the love. I took from all religions I was in and spiritual practice, everything what was good, what benefits me, like Bruce Lee, I created my own style. Like a swan, whatever is shit, you spit it out. Let it not enter to you. You can search through all traditions and whatever feels right, I took for myself, I built myself, and I created a u unique master. And my message is very universal. And I can refer, because I was through Christianity and then through Hinduism and also through some is, is, is Islamic things, I was introduced with everything. And now I can base my teachings. When I'm ready, I will be... I can reach many different religions and traditions because in me there's just one love and one rainbow. And whatever didn't feel right, I took all the best... What, in the Krishna sect they gave me, and from Jesus I took all the best, from yoga I took all the best, from tantra I took all the best, from everyone I took all the best, from Lalon, from Baals, Fakirs. But I even freed myself from Baals and Fakirs, the most free group that I ever met in my life, which actually teach what we teach. Because I also see they're identifying themselves with this dress, with this tradition, 
And in Bangladesh, they made the religion out of alone. He's almost Jesus now. So like Krishna says, he always says, from I'll always have to come, always have to come like waves of the ocean. Because ignorance of man, wickedness of man, and time always corrupts and inverts my truth. And the truth is that we all are gods. And there's a rainbow only. And I'm repeating now myself, and I will start repeating myself, and I will not do this enough. So, thank you for watching the art of the world that I am. This video is very profound and deep and very colorful. If you just watch little, I really advise you to watch complete because there's so much in this video. But thank you for all the love. Thank you for all the likes. Thank you for everything. May you become your greatest version. Be connected with tradition, whatever you like. Is this Hinduism? Is this Islamic? Is this Christianity? But don't be a religion. Be connected with that love, with that master. And do know that it's about you. If you want to please a master, it's about you become greater. You follow that steps, you embody, and then you become what Christ was. You become what Krishna was. And in this way, master is pleased because his work is done. You are doing greater things. You are on the way to do greater things. So thank you. And I'll be alive now more because outside is cold. And when it's cold, I can, I, last year I was doing outside short videos. Now videos are one hour. So I'll be alive more. And yes, if anybody, if you feel like you want to support the art of the world that I am, now in winter time, I only depended on the art of the world that I am. I'm at peace in my soul. I'm in joy. I know I'm maintained if I do my work. Flu days are over and actually didn't bring me much, but bring me much joy. And I'm now solving the case because I was arrested last week for playing the flute, literally punished like from Judge Dredd on the middle of the street for giving love and breaking no law, actually. But anyway, it's cold now. I anyway cannot play, but I will fix this so that I can play legally. But anyway, ev everyone can play legally. I don't do it like work. I do twice a week, two hours for children to go away from Facebook. In winter, you cannot go. But this is my work. This is my love. And if you feel it brings value to you, but more only if you, your heart feels that you want to contribute, you want to assist, Maybe you assist yourself even more. I'm just so grateful for every coin. And may you be blessed. Nothing is too little. And I'm a simple man. And I know where I am now. And I know where I'm heading. And I'll never forget those who chosen in they, they, their heart to ever help me with their donation. And may you be blessed so much to reach enlightenment. Work on yourself. I cannot do anything. I can only, like I do for everyone who offers me a do donation, I do healing on your energy, on your body, and I can teach, but this is all I can do. I have to do my work all my life. I'm awakened for two decades almost, and I was in India meditating nonstop, working on myself. I, nobody can save you. There's no savior. There's no Lord. You can hope that they will. You can waste your time. But if you do the work, you can become, we all can become greater. And like for every donation I do, healing, I connect with your energy. Quantum healing, healing, I don't speak about it because what I can heal? I only do the best that I can. Quantum healing needs no, no appointment. You don't need to stand still. And that's just gratitude for your gift. I give gift of my love, which is my healing energy. But healing only works if you work on yourself, if you do that changes that make you rise. And teaching only works if we implement some teachings. I will always give you my word. This is my love. And I'm so grateful for everyone who ever contributed. Thank you. And I'm a man living on faith, living on trust. Well, I'm not my mind, 
and that's good because as long as I was mind, I would never be able to do this what I do now. And the trust and faith comes from the truth that I am, where that I am. And my mind is only my mind now. I'm not my mind. I have the mind. I am the heart, the word that I am speaking. And I know if I came so far in not even two decades, then I know what is heading just ahead. And now it's just quantum speed, everything ascending. And I know that everyone can heal, can heal their false self, get rid of their attachment, stop living in mind, get enlightened in their heart and be the truth. I know I came so far and I know that everyone can. But if you keep, if you're plugged in religious be beliefs in separation, which are actually against your divine best, and in the same way you are a trying to be part of ascension when you are embodying God, the source energy, but in the same way you follow something in your heart still that it, where, where is offense to even think that you are source and God. You, you're sitting on two chairs. You cannot trust. I never left Jesus. I never left Krishna, but I left all these religions and sects and all their bullshit and lies and the love complementary truth, the source truth I took from all religions. And I just want to all my life present to the world the rainbow of love that we are. So thank you. See you hopefully every day. Now I'll make more live videos. Namaste. And become your greatest version. Become that what Jesus and Krishna wanted you to be, who you really are, and do greatest things. We all are divine masters here to embody, if we choose so and work on ourselves, to embody our highest self, higher self, higher self, source self on earth. We save ourselves. And then we do greater things. The only way out is your ascension, is your enlightenment. There's no other way. I am the way, I am the light, I am the truth. That I am you. There's no other way but you becoming that I am. And you are from the other side in the matrix. Now you save yourself, your second coming from the heart. You're born. Christ is born by your name, my name, everyone's name. If they choose so, we all can become who we are. And that's what this video was about. Namaste and much, 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 much love.